Government agencies are experiencing COVID-19 related attacks, phishing and malware scams ramp up as coronavirus becomes a pandemic, and Microsoft fixes an SMB flaw. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for March 17th, 2020. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. This is the first episode from my new home in Colorado, so it may go through some growing pains as I fix audio and lighting along the way. Please bear with me in this process. It's been a really crazy month, seriously, <laughs> but I'm trying my best to stay on schedule for y'all. So with that said, on to the news. The first one is all about the HHS. More on that in a bit. Now, with any widespread issue also comes the threat of cyber attacks, and coronavirus is no different. The U.S. Health and Human Services Department reported on Monday via Bloomberg that an attack on their systems was active over the weekend, but it did not do any damage or steal any data. Reporters suggest that this attack was fully intended to just slow the agency systems by attacking them with a distributed denial-of-service attack. The US HHS did state that they saw a surge in activity, but they are fully operational and that their own preparations for their staff working remotely will defend against malicious activity. A foreign state-sponsored actor is suspected to be the attacker in this case, but no confirmation was given publicly regarding this possibility. Now, this is not the only government-related cybersecurity issue related to the outbreak either. The National Security Council sent out a warning on Sunday regarding a tweet stating that any messages talking about a nationwide quarantine are fake and there are no government lockdowns reported related to a text message that was spreading like wildfire. This incident was related to the HHS attack, but no other information is currently available regarding the two attacks and how they are actually related. An investigation into these attacks is currently underway. There are a lot of scams and phishing campaigns happening right now related to COVID-19, so it is important to be mindful of any potential for an attack. Here are just a few of the ways that attackers and criminals are using the current panic to take advantage of unsuspecting individuals. A coronavirus map was acting as a Trojan horse to install malware on end-user machines, which could steal passwords, usernames, and a lot more. Reason Lab security researchers Shai Alfasi analyzed malware that Malware Hunter team found hidden inside a coronavirus map downloadable application that could steal credentials stored on a user's browser on their client machine. This map shows the current infections on a world view, so obviously everybody is interested. Once the map application is downloaded, the malware, which is called AZO Rolt, is used as this information stealer to siphon off browsing history, cookies, IDs, and passwords words, cryptocurrency, and pretty much whatever else it can get its hands on. This malware is not new. It was first discovered in 2016, and it is commonly found on Russian underground forums. AZO Rolt comes in a few different variants, one of which can create an administrative account on the infected machine, which can allow the attacker to connect via RDP. The malware is embedded in the corona-virus-map.com.exe, downloaded as a Win32 executable file with a small payload of less than four megs. If you wanna stay aware of current totals, don't download anything. Just simply pay a visit to Johns Hopkins University online to see a map that is actively being updated, and that link is down below. Don't worry, this one is safe. This and other downloadables may be sent in chain mail inspired emails that incite an emotional response, and that's what you should look out for. In one example, an advanced persistent threat group is using COVID-19 to spread malware in a campaign dubbed Vicious Panda. Researchers with Checkpoint Research state that this attack uses two rich text format, or RTF, files to target Mongolian public sector workers. It is sent via email, and once opened, it can screenshot the device and send the attacker lists of the files, directories, and a lot more about those 
those affected machines. The email urges Mongolian workers to inform victims about infections of the pandemic, and it appears to be derived from a Chinese hacking group. Another attack, on the other hand, deriving from the Russian hacking group called Hades, was carried out in February using a backdoor Trojan to spread disinformation. And lastly, an app called COVID-19 Tracker is actually being used as ransomware, not as an outbreak map tracker like it appears to be. This ransomware is used to request $100 in Bitcoin within 48 hours, or everything on your phone will be erased and social media accounts will be leaked publicly. Whatever that means. This one is hosted on a website, not via the Google Play Store, but Android users could download it from the website if they were directed there. It requests access to the lock screen and accessibility settings. COVID lock will lock the screen with a ransom note, and users, since Android 7, can unlock with a password, which appears to bypass the ransomware and keep you safe. This one is avoidable by strictly downloading apps from the Google Play Store and keeping your OS updated. These kinds of attacks will likely ramp up in frequencies as more users work from home and cyber criminals start targeting folks who would usually be on a secure internal company network. Keep an eye out for suspicious emails or attachments and don't download them. Double check that any charity is a legitimate one before donating money. And lastly, if you do see random Facebook groups or data shared on Twitter, make sure that it is legitimate and not a misinformation campaign. It's important to take strides to protect yourself, not only physically out in the world, as we all should do, but in this connected world as well. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters over at Patreon patreon.com slash threatwire. I feel like we could all use some hush puppy love right now. So my hush puppy perk level patrons are awesome. I love them so much for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them. Keep them coming. They are adorable. Seriously, I'm stuck in my house. So please send me all the fur baby photos. And if you want to support Threatwire, but you don't want to be a Patreon supporter, check out snubsy.com slash shop to get t-shirts, stickers, and even my own digital photography, all of which supports these shows. And now with everything happening, this has been a really, really stressful month, but not just because of the virus, but also because I moved to a brand new state. I won't get into any of the craziness here because Threatwire is not the place for that, but I do want to say thank you to everyone who has continually supported my shows. Please stay safe. Don't panic buy. Seriously, it's like really hard to stock my pantry with anything because we didn't move with lots of food and everybody is taking all the food. So please save some for the people that really need food in their house and take care of the folks in your life that need it most. We can get through this together. We need to be a community and we can be a community without like being socially, physically interactive. And I will continue to bring you security content every single week that I absolutely can. So thank you to everyone for supporting the show. And lastly for today, some security news not related to the virus. Microsoft issued an advisory on March 10th regarding a vulnerability in SMB version 3, stating that a client and server remote code execution vulnerability with CVE 2020-0796 was affecting the server message block 3.1.1. This can allow an attacker to send code and execute code on a server or client with SMB. It is only present in the 32 and 64 bit versions of the Windows 10 copies of the clients and servers. So those are versions 1903 and 1909. It's also difficult to exploit, but this was still deemed critical because of its ability to worm, meaning an attack using this vulnerability could spread from machine to machine without user interaction. Now, Microsoft does not believe this flaw is being exploited currently, but it could be in the future. When it went public due to an accidental leak by a cybersecurity company, Microsoft ended up patching the issue two days later. Before I leave, I want to say thank you to E. Euler, Adam, Creston, and Jeremiah who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. You are awesome, and I hope you love the Patreon community as just as much as I do. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet, which for once seems completely socially acceptable. I will see you next week. Bye!